So I ran into a new problem. My XY squaring brackets that I designed for fine tuning the uh, squareness of my Y linear rods get in the way of the idler pulleys bracket as designed by Tech2C. As a result, I had to redesign the XY squaring bracket to include the idler pulleys in it. The end result is this. Now this is much larger as a whole than the uh, original squaring bracket, but it gives a much larger degree of adjustment. Now if it's installed fairly square to start with, you really don't need a lot of adjustment, but this does allow a significant amount of up and down as well as left and right and you can see from the screw sticking out over here on the side that the left and right can be fine-tuned additionally there will be a bracket across the top that will allow fine-tuning of the vertical as well as the fine-tuning of the horizontal the nut is already in place here, the screw hole. I'm just reprinting the top bracket here because the A-net printer will not give me consistent prints no matter what I do. I get a good print once, I go to print the next time, and it turns out totally garbage. If you can see here on this bracket here, I ended up with a lot of empty holes, empty spaces, where it didn't fill in completely. It used the exact same settings as I've been using for this one here. And I had none of that problem. After adjusting the settings again, I got this one here. But I don't know from one print to the next when it's going to fail. So I can't just automatically make the adjustments. I have to see what happens on any given print. And this print started out great. The uh, lines were all filling in. Everything was matching up. Everything was filling in neatly. And you can see the infill here on the center doesn't show the same problem as out here on the edge. The other thing that this, problem, this one has that's a problem is it ended up with a weak layer adhesion again. Now, I'm not going to blame this on the fact that uh, I didn't have my cooling fan on or anything like that because I'm printing with ABS. And the temperature I've been printing at is pretty much the same across the board. Uh, I haven't changed anything on that. I've been printing at about 225 every print. And regardless of which print it is, some of them come out looking like garbage and others come out looking great. Some of them seem to have over extrusion, some of them seem to have under extrusion. I believe it's a product of the filament that I have, that the uh, filament is def not even all the way down the core. So I do have some more filament coming and we'll see what it does when it gets here. So, until uh, the other bracket's done printing, <coughs> this is just about ready to uh, get the belts hooked up. I do have belts. My 10 meters of belt came in. I ordered plenty so that if there was a problem I could uh, have extra. So, once I get the other bracket out and on the board then uh, we'll be ready to go. Now the other thing I did do is because every modification has been moving my rail back just a little bit by five millimeter increments it seems like instead of continuing to drill more holes I took a uh, 
rotary tool bit and I milled out a slot so that I can adjust at the center here as I need to. If I have to keep pushing it back or if I come to another design decision that will actually bring it forward, uh, I've got plenty of room to do that. I've still got a full quarter of an inch, uh, quarter to a half of an inch of uh, movement here on my slot. For those of you who deal in metric, that's about 12 millimeters. So, <clears throat> got plenty of room there to work. So, until the next part's done, things are ready to go. One of the next steps I'm going to be attempting is to see if the ANAT board will take the Core XY programming. That's going to decide whether I have to buy a uh, Arduino and ramps or I can stick with the ANAT board. We've got our X and Z squaring brackets all set up. Got the belts on, as you can see, and the new belt retainer bracket design that fits the ANET A8 carriage, hot end carriage. Everything appears to be working at this point. If you watch, the one motor is turning, the other motor is turning, both motors are turning on a straight move, front to back. It does appear I need to raise this motor up on the left hand side some because the belt is getting cocked as it comes forward. On the rear everything looks like it's lined up well enough. Again if we move it left and right both motors turn The mechanics all seem to be working okay. And if we take it on a diagonal, only one motor turns. the other side, take the other diagonal, and the right hand motor does not turn, the left hand motor does. So mechanically everything appears to be working well, aside from the fact that uh, the rods still have some uh, play in the bearings. If you look, we're not quite square here on the x-axis. That's a matter of uh, fine-tuning the belt tension between the two different motors. So, so far, everything is working out. Now, I do need to revamp the uh, belt clamp for one it doesn't have quite enough of a quite narrow enough gap where the belts come through so they're not locking each other into place for the other thing at the end of travel the belts at the extruder carriage are forward 
of the pulleys. And so at extreme travel ranges there's going to be more tension on the belts than uh, down the center. So I've got to adjust that offset. Now I may be able to get away with it just uh, <coughs> flipping the uh, bracket over that holds the belts and that'll pull them out roughly three to four millimeters that may be enough but since I've got to redesign the bracket a little bit anyway to uh, close up that extra gap there you can see if it'll focus see how much play there is between the two belts. The teeth are not together at all. So I think a redesign of the brackets, the bracket itself will resolve that issue. I'll be able to uh, pull the belts out away from the uh, carriage another three millimeters and hopefully resolve all those issues. Now the other thing is the belts have to be installed prior to assembly onto the carriage because of how they're tucked in underneath the bearings. A redesign of the carriage could conceivably bring the entire belt locking assembly outside of the bearing assemblies to facilitate installation easier. Although I'm not sure how it'll work on the bottom one because that's going to be right over the rail. I don't have a problem with it. I don't think I have a problem with it at all installing the belts on the uh, retainer clips and then installing the retainer onto the extruder carriage. That seemed to work out just fine. So I may just go with it like that. Well, maybe not, because as I look at it, at the end of travel, the top belt, if you can see here, is lower than the pulley. So if I extend this to the outside for the retaining loop, I can bring that up another, oh, it looks to be about two millimeters. The bottom one looks like it's fairly well lined up. So I'll have to figure it out have to see what I can do and go from there. So that's it for now. Till the next redesign part, install. Everything is going together well so far and I've left myself plenty of room for making fine-tuning adjustments. The only place that I need a don't have that fine tuning adjustment is on the belt clamp itself. So I've got to figure out what I'm going to do to be able to adjust the different belt tensions between the two axes in order to bring square up the X carriage between the two belts.
and I've got to redesign the belt retainer bracket. So thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying it. If you like, give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. Take care. Have a good day.